Coming up on Ag Week TV, we take our annual look back at some of our favorite stories of the year. The pandemic caused major disruptions in the food supply chain. We'll hear from one business that benefited from it. We profile a local winery developing grapes for our cooler climate. We'll check back with a couple of upper Midwest farmers making life better for farmers in Africa and Haiti. And we'll take you to a place where they grow tomatoes all year round. Welcome to Ag Week TV's annual holiday show. I'm Michelle Rock. We're here at Superior Grain Equipment in Kindred, North Dakota, and we hope you're having a very Merry Christmas. 2020 has been a very difficult year, and the holidays are very different for many of us. Our holiday show also looks a little bit different than in years past, but we want to end the year on a positive note, and we do so every year by taking a look back at some of our favorite stories that we had on Ag Week this year. Our reporters are scattered around North and South Dakota as well as Minnesota, and this is one time of the year that we usually all gather together. But following COVID safety precautions, we won't be able to do that this year. So some reporters will be joining us by video to talk about their stories, while others are here in person, socially distanced. Joining me in person are Michael Pates, Emily Beal, as well as Rose Dunn. Now, obviously, we can't ignore the biggest story of the year, which was COVID-19 and the pandemic, and the big impact that it had on how we do our jobs. And Mikkel, how did it impact how you do your job? You know, just social distancing with you know, the people we're trying to interview. Uh, we're often out in the field, out in the, in the air, or in big buildings, where you're probably not that uh, exposed, but you have to make sure that uh, either you're using a long boom, which is an apparatus to set up, or you're, you know, using equipment that you've wiped down and make sure that the farmers uh, that you're interviewing or the people that you're talking to are um, not touching any of it. So, Emily, you were new to the area, mm -hmm. new to reporting, and then you throw the pandemic in on top of that. So that made it kind of challenging for you, didn't it? It definitely was challenging. I think it's a little difficult to start a career, let alone start a career in a pandemic, but I'm so grateful that I was able to join the Ag Week team. Um, being new to the region, it really was difficult during the pandemic to go out and make those connections. Rose, about March, we actually saw forum communications ask people to work from home, including yourself. I did not think I could do my job as a producer and, and working with a video from home, but I have to say I was very impressed at how quickly our company mobilized everybody, got us equipped to work from home, shut down the building, and it really felt pretty seamless. We uh, really didn't miss a beat at Ag Week. Just to tell you a little bit about some of the behind the scenes things that did happen. I would be out in the field, out at our farm, or out in a soybean field or a corn field, and I would be taping the show, and then I would be sending it to Fargo so that they could assemble the show. I think it worked beautifully. I worried every week about the weather, but we were so lucky. Now we'll see going forward, but we've had such a nice fall, and it looked pretty natural for you to be standing out in a field doing an egg show. Yeah, in fact, I know a lot of people said to me, well, we like it better when you're out in the field <laughs> taping the show because it's a farm show and that's where you should be. Well, one of the biggest stories of the past year was the coronavirus outbreaks at several large meat processing facilities that caused disruptions to the supply chain. Thousands of hogs had to be destroyed, plants were partially or fully closed, and people were out of work, along with decreased demand from restaurants and other food service sectors. Now, that led some livestock producers to make some changes in the way that they do business. Some took their meat to local processors, with some selling directly to consumers. And Mickle profiled a couple of sixth-generation farmers and ranchers on the North Dakota-South Dakota border that were just about to make a major change in their beef marketing business when the pandemic hit. Lacey Block was just starting her farm-to-table enterprise, Ranchers' Rebellion, just as the COVID-19 was shutting down packing plants throughout the Midwest. That drove meat prices up and left some store shelves empty of meat, and it exposed how vulnerable the supply chain is. About two years ago, Lacey started learning about the business of finishing cattle instead of simply taking calves to market. In February, Block and her family were getting set to start selling more of their beef directly to the public 
mostly through freezers at small town convenience stores. But suddenly, everything changed. Our first retail location opened, and two days later, uh, social distancing and um, stay-at-home recommendations all went into place. And I was like, oh, I made a huge mistake. So then I made a push with the direct sales, and it just blew up. I never imagined being able to bring farm-raised beef to this amount and volume and diverse and different consumers. They started holding pop-up distributions, like this one in a Fargo parking lot. They say customers have been receptive. So, Mikkel, do you think that this type of direct marketing is going to continue after the pandemic has kind of died down? Well, kind of predictably, everything, uh, you know, the prices when they uh, went back to more of a normal situation, some of their markets went away, uh, the possibilities. But... Uh, I think a lot of people got started with more of these direct marketing things and some of that will stay because, you know, people like to have these relationships with producers. I think it also gave folks a better appreciation for farmers. Thanks, Michael. The region is dotted with small operations that don't necessarily fit the mold of traditional farms. We've brought you several of those stories over the years. One of them is a vineyard just south of Fargo that Emily Beal visited this summer. And Emily, you don't really think of the upper Midwest as wine country. You know, the upper Midwest has been deemed a little too harsh for wine grape varieties, but new breeds are changing that. At Bear Creek Winery, they're working with university researchers to develop grapes for this region. No, we're a complete winery here. We grow the grapes here, we ferment the grapes, and it's bottled here and it's served here. Rod Ballinger grew up on a farm near Verona, North Dakota. But during his world travels as a military and commercial pilot, he developed a passion for wine. That led to an interest in winemaking and a new venture back in his home state. Ballinger and his wife Sue built the Bear Creek Winery Barn just south of Fargo in 2000. They run it with their son and they also breed grapes for this climate. We can't grow traditional grapes here like Cabernet and those types of grapes because uh, they're not cold hardy enough. They would die in the wintertime. So we have to have a system where we breed our own grapes or have breeders that breed for us. Crimson Pearl is one of the varieties they're developing. I realized that we could grow a wine region here when I tasted that wine that was grown on our estate. And until then, I thought it was more of like a hobby that my parents were doing. And then I was like, I think we can do this here. Emily, how did COVID-19 impact Bear Creek Winery? So the Ballingers opted to not open Bear Creek Winery to the public this season, but they are scheduling private tastings for small groups. So if you are interested in that, you can give the Ballingers a call at Bear Creek Winery and they will schedule that for you. Thanks, Emily. Ahead on this special holiday edition of Ag Week TV, we'll check back with a couple of area farmers who are working hard to improve farming practices in other countries. When you think about it, productivity starts at planting. So it's time to rethink how productive your planter can be. We did with the new Case IH 2000 Series Early Riser Planter. We rethought your row unit so it's tougher, more accurate. We rethought your meter, took the most precise technology, factory installed it. We rethought every inch of the Case IH Early Riser Planter to make it the most productive planter around. And if you think about it, that's exactly what you want. No one knows agriculture quite like AgriFinancial. With more than 500 combined years of ag experience, our ag lending experts truly understand your business. Since 1989, our mission has always been honesty, integrity, and commitment to quality service for our customers. Get started today at cgb-agfi.com. Small or large, Superior Grain Equipment has a storage solution for you with a wide variety of bin options and accessories, along with site planning and superior customer service. Plus, from top to bottom, we offer the industry's best bins and warranties to protect your products and your grain storage investment. Get superior quality, protection, and reliability with generations of experience and dependability. Make the superior choice today with Superior Grain Equipment. Insurance. It's not something you think about every day, but it is something you need to get to your next destination, to preserve what you've built, to secure what you'll leave behind, to safeguard the things you value most. Enjoy peace of mind knowing you have protection from the unexpected, 
security all year round, and expertise you can trust. Farmers Mutual of Nebraska, always alongside you. Egg Week brings you timely agriculture news from field to fork in digital, print, and television. Fresh every week, join Jenny Schlecht from the Egg Week editorial team and me, Al Windmill, from the sales and marketing team for a deeper dive into farm and ranch stories along with guest interviews with personalities from the world of agriculture. If you're involved in farming, ranching, or agribusiness, the Egg Week podcast is the show for you. Welcome back to this special holiday edition of Ag Week TV here from Superior Grain Equipment in Kindred, North Dakota. This year, we met some farmers who don't just want to improve their own operations, they're helping farmers in other countries as well. Noah Fish brought us the story of a group in southeast Minnesota working to bring better farming practices to an impoverished area of Africa. Michelle, Operation Dignity International started a demonstration farm in Ghana to help local villagers grow crops and raise their income. I've learned that it's great to give back. Andy Hart is a third generation farmer in Rochester, Minnesota. About a year ago, he was approached by a group called Operation Dignity International. Our goal is to get him out of poverty. The group was looking for a farmer to go to the West African nation of Ghana to help them improve their farm technology and raise better crops. Okay. To show the local villagers what type of farming we want to do. We want to use a tractor, we want to use a planter, we want to be able to use uh, uh, seed. We're going to fertilize. We're going to use modern farming technology and, and equipment that we would as if we we're farming here in the United States. The group rented 100 acres of land in Ghana and is looking for donations of money and equipment. Their three-year goal is to increase average farm size from 3 to 300 acres and use the farmers they train to teach other villagers how to improve their farming practices. And in 10 to 15 years, we could literally change the country of Ghana. So Hart was actually planning to go back to Ghana to plant soybeans, but then the coronavirus pandemic delayed those plants. So Noah, did they ever get back there to Ghana to plant? So Michelle, Hart obviously wasn't able to go to Ghana this year, but Kathy Sullivan, the group's executive director, says it was his help that guided farmers there to successfully plant and harvest around 60 acres of soybeans this year. Oh, and that's by hand. Thanks so much, Noah. Well, in addition to that, a North Dakota farmer is having a big impact on the island nation of Haiti. The country has a long history of poverty, coupled with natural disasters. Jenny Schlecht found a man who's made big changes in his life to help Haiti. Michelle, North Dakota farmer John Draxton visited Haiti 18 years ago. Then, after the 2010 earthquake, he moved there to support an effort to improve Haitian agriculture. In 2002, on a mission trip to Haiti, Draxton gave some money to his translator in Haiti. Josu Cesar put that money toward his education in agriculture and finances. In 2010, Cesar contacted Draxton with an idea to start the International Farmers Organization for Sustainable Development in Haiti, known as IFACID. Initially, Draxton helped raise money in North Dakota to support IFACID, but eventually he moved to Haiti to do even more. He opened a butcher shop called Farmer John's that has grown into a successful business with profits going to IFACID. I really feel like this ministry is really helping them. They're really, they're really uh, thriving and we're, we're really changing communities. It's really spurred into a big business and I didn't really realize that. That wasn't the plan, but my plan is to make a business to support IFACID and it's, it's, I can see it coming together now. Jackson says helping them be self-sufficient is the most important part of his work. Jenny, when you first reported on this story, you said that John was trying to start a youth program like FFA. Do you know, has he ever been able to do that? Yeah, John tells me that despite the pandemic, they've been able to get future farmers of Haiti off the ground, and they have several schools and more than 200 children involved. Thanks so much, Jenny. Still ahead on this special holiday edition of Ag Week TV, we'll check in on a place where they grow tomatoes and greens all year round. And we'll visit a small farm with a very special mission. Now is the best time to plan for your 2021 farm equipment needs. North Dakota-based Summers Manufacturing is currently offering early order savings. Take advantage of big savings on North America's broadest tillage line, including the Super Colder Samurai and the innovative BRT Renegade, as well as the best-built, best-backed land rollers in the industry. 
Talk to your Summers dealer today or go to SummersMFG.com to learn more about early order savings available on all Summers equipment. Challenges. We all face them at some time. But it seems that egg has seen its fair share over the past few years. Has your farming operation been able to stand the challenges? If not, maybe it's time to talk to the risk management specialist at Martinson Egg. We can help you make the sound decisions to help your operation weather the storm. Martinson Egg, your one-stop shop for crop insurance, livestock insurance, and marketing. We are here to take your operation to the next level. Steffes Group, selling land and the equipment to farm it since 1960. If you're interested in selling or have questions about our auction process, head to our website at steffesgroup.com to contact us at any one of our four locations located throughout the Midwest. You can also visit and subscribe to our YouTube channel to view all of our auction previews and recaps to stay up to date on the market in your area. You've worked your entire life for this. Through the ups and downs, you've stood strong, building a legacy to be proud of. With all good things in this world, there are still risks. It's a part of life. You need protection you can count on. We're not just here to insure your equipment, your vehicles, or your home. We're here to protect everything you've built. Farmers Mutual of Nebraska, always alongside you. Go beyond the headlines with an Ag Week membership. Get in-depth agribusiness reporting, original farm and ranch stories, and fact-based research for the most comprehensive ag news in the upper Midwest. Experienced ag journalists bring you exclusive ag news, insights, and policy updates you won't find anywhere else. Become a member today and get unlimited access to Ag Week and Ag Week TV. From Superior Grain Equipment here in Kindred, North Dakota, you're watching our holiday best of edition of Ag Week TV. There's nothing like the taste of a tomato fresh off the vine, but in this climate, the season is short, except at Meadowlark Garden in Northeast North Dakota. Katie Pinky visited there to see their unique growing method. And Katie, how did they do it? Michelle, they grow tomatoes year round in a 4,300 square foot greenhouse for local restaurants and grocery stores. It all started when Dennis Lowen, his wife and family returned to the U.S. after 25 years of farming in Brazil. They wanted to start a business, so they bought this greenhouse from a relative as a sort of retirement job, although they had no experience running a greenhouse. The process starts around the first of the year when the plants are seeded. Metal Art gets them in mid-February when they're planted in the greenhouse. The first tomatoes are ready to pick and deliver in late April. These indeterminate plants continue to produce until December. They've just grown in that little bag, not in the soil. Put that little drip tube in there, we set that on the bag and that's how we plant them. I enjoy working with plants. It's, it's, it's intriguing, it's uh, challenging to know what all the nutrients that a plant needs and to keep it healthy and balanced with fruit and leaves. And the secret to their success? Lowen says it's the difference between tomatoes being picked green and shipped a long distance or vine ripened, picked fresh. So Katie, when did they actually start getting ready for the new crop? Dennis tells me they just cleaned out the last of the 2020 plants. Another season of Meadowlark Garden tomatoes, herbs and microgreens will be in restaurants and stores in late April. Thanks Katie for that story. We found another small farm north of Moorhead that raises tomatoes and lots of other produce. Rose Dunn discovered that they do it with a very special staff. I just love visiting this place. Farm in the Dell of the Red River Valley employs people with special needs to plant, grow, pick, and sell all kinds of produce, and they just love what they do. We have probably about 90 different types of vegetables out here. Farm in the Dell of the Red River Valley is located on 30 acres, five miles north of Moorhead. It's part of an international program that employs people with disabilities. That is an organization that just encourages the concept of giving people special needs the opportunity to thrive in a country setting. We're able to take them out here and just see how far they can go. So some of them, it's growing something from seed, seeing it come to fruit and picking. Other ones, they're actually driving tractors. It's a nonprofit funded largely with donations and sales of their produce. In fact, the land was donated a few years ago. 
The garden is six acres and the rest is rented out to help cover costs. The boxes are CSA subscriptions where much of their produce goes. The rest is sold at area farmers markets. It's just a fun job. Feels happy to give to people and stuff. Rose, has the pandemic affected operations at Farm in the Dell? Yeah, somewhat. Like many organizations, they rely heavily on donations and volunteers, so COVID has really thrown them a few curveballs, but they tell me that plans are still on track for expansion next summer with their Yupik strawberry farm and a fruit tree orchard. It was a great story. Thanks so much, Rose. When we come back on this special holiday edition of Ag Week TV, a young couple gave up city life to start an organic farm. This off-season's downtime is the perfect chance to get ready for spring with North Star Egg's lineup of quality farm equipment. We carry Meridian Seed Express bulk tenders for seed handling in the field, Batco conveyors for moving grain and seed at the farm, plus Meridian Grain Max hopper bins for quality storage at great prices. We've also got high output, easy to operate Valmar fertilizer spreaders ready to go. Visit northstar-egg.com or stop by our new location off I-94 in Tower City, North Dakota to see our full lineup. Schedule an uptime inspection for your equipment with the Case IH service professionals at your local Tight Machinery. Our Case IH certified service technicians have the training, experience, and genuine Case IH parts to ensure your equipment is ready for next season. Planting and harvesting windows are short. Have confidence in your equipment's performance with a Tight Machinery multi point uptime inspection. Tight Machinery, your local Case IH service leader. Advanced Grain Handling is your regional dealer for grain handler dryers, bins, and accessories. With Grain Handler's continuous mixed flow drying systems, you're capable of high levels of grain dryer efficiency on all types of grain, including seed grain. Advanced Grain Handling also carries West Steel's quality galvanized steel products for on-farm and commercial grain storage solutions. Advanced Grain Handling has licensed and trained service techs and a licensed electrical shop. Get a hold of Chad Kylo to find the perfect solution for your farm. If you have a basement waterproofing or structural emergency, Safe Basements North is here to help. Our team of basement repair professionals will find the cause of the problem and work with you to develop a permanent solution. Safe Basements North is following CDC recommendations and is here to help keep your home and family safe. For a free consultation, go to safebasementsnorth.com and take advantage of our 12-month no interest, no payments offer. I'm Jesse Treble and peace of mind is a safe basement. We're going to talk today about a revolutionary auto steer product that you guys have developed. We back one of these things in, it'll drain a 40 acre patch just within hours. What can you tell us about what dairy farmers do to make sure that their animals are happy? Their care is our primary concern. Is there still time for producers to get storage bins up? Absolutely. We still can definitely get something up and ready for corn harvests. Welcome back to our Ag Week holiday special and thanks to our host, Superior Grain Equipment. It's hard to get into the business of farming, but a young couple continues to grow their heart and soil organic farm in rural Gardner, North Dakota. Jonathan Knudsen has been following their progress in the often difficult business of farming. Ross and Amber Lockhart left their non-aid careers in 2012 to come and start the family farm. There have been changes since then, but they remain committed to what they're doing. Being able to grow our own food is a really rewarding and gratifying experience. Ross and Amber Lockhart left non-agricultural careers on the West Coast to improve life for themselves and their daughter, Stella. In 2012, they began on rented land and now have their own farmstead near Fargo. This is their eighth growing season and the Lockharts generally are pleased with their progress, but they're always looking for ways to improve. It's very difficult to find access to farmland and so finding a space that was suitable for what we do, which is small scale on just a few acres growing vegetables, was a huge victory for us. Ross took a full-time job off the farm for the steady income and health insurance. He still helps on the farm, but Amber is the primary operator. The Lockharts built a high tunnel to extend their growing season and plan a second one. You know, we're trying to focus on ways to make our farm long-term sustainable. John, how have the Lockharts fared during COVID? The pandemic has definitely affected their business. For example, health considerations, concerns, led them to quit attending farmers markets. And that was a tough step, a big step, but one they haven't regretted. 
Thanks, Jonathan. When we come back, we'll wrap up our Ag Week holiday special from Superior Grain Equipment with a look at the beauty of agriculture. Growing up as a kid, Gateway was always the grain bin building and the grain handling people that were out in our area. One of the reasons we chose to go with Gateway was they're the leader in the industry and they are the number one Brock dealer in the United States. We've really liked the Brock design and some of the designs that Gateway has come up with throughout the years. My best advice would be to just put your trust in them and let them uh, come up with the design that's going to fit your needs. This is Dennis Beliski reminding you, we do auctions and we do them well. You've built your operation with hard work and when it's time to sell, all or part, you deserve the best. Details from repairs and preparation to promotion and settlements are not routine. Chances are you'll only do this once, so we'll tailor an auction just for you and get it done right. On site at your farm or added to one of our highly successful Alaris Center auctions, we have the skill, reputation, and integrity to meet your needs with best-in-class commitment and quality service. Find us at resourceauction.com or call 701-757-4015. For Ag Week, this is Mikkel Pates at Watertown, South Dakota. We'll look at the positive impacts that dairy can have on the community. A Minnesota couple has put a grain bin to a new use. Spoiler alert, it's not grain. This elaborate system of tubing with the downhill slope is how Maplewood State Park gathers sap to make syrup. Thanks for joining us for this week's edition of Ag Week TV. Remember, for all your ag news, go to agweek.com or follow us on Facebook and Twitter as well. Every year, 40% of all food in the U.S. never gets eaten. 40%. That's almost half the food we produce. Food waste is a serious problem. It impacts all of us. And it's expensive. Your family is throwing $1,500 a year in the trash. We're working hard to put food waste on the chopping block. And you can do the same at home. Learn how to cook it, store it, and share it. Just don't waste it. Go to savethefood.com. Welcome back. All this month, we've been getting flooded with photos depicting the theme, the beauty of agriculture for our Ag Week holiday photo contest. Starting December 28th, be sure to look for those entries at agweek.com. The winners will be announced next week. As we close our show, here's a sneak peek at some of the wonderful entries. Thanks to everyone who entered. And thanks to Superior Grain Equipment for hosting our annual holiday show. Happy holidays from all of us here at Ag Week and we'll see you in 2021.